The all-new Yamaha V6 Offshore F350. It's a featherweight knockout. The lightest 350 horsepower outboard on the water. Exhilarating boating and incredible control in a powerfully light design. The Yamaha V6 Offshore F350. Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's June 6th. These are your headlines. We heard of the first Bonito this week, if you can believe that. Uh, also, hearing about a lot of big striped bass out in western Long Island Sound. And we've seen sea bass up to five pounds in Buzzards Bay this week. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Next thing is the latest installment of Jenny Ackerman's Open Boat. Here she is. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Now today we are gonna talk about a rig that I like to use for sea bass. Sea bass fishing right now across the region has been red hot. People are slinging up some big knuckleheads on their boats and everything and just absolutely crushing the sea bass. So this is a rig that's gonna help you guys get in on the red hot sea bass bite. To start, you got yourself some 40 pound mono. And what I'm going to do first is I don't cut my leader material off the spool just yet. I want to work with as much as I can first. At the very bottom of the rig, you're going to tie a little surgeon's loop. And this surgeon's loop is going to be for your sinker. Now, based off of the region you're in or like the underwater current, you can have up to like a four to eight ounce sinker. You can go a little heavy because you need to get that stuff down to the bottom quick. So you have your surgeon's loop on the bottom, and then you're gonna give yourself about six inches of space to work with, and you're gonna do a dropper loop. So the dropper loop, take your leader, and you're gonna fold it so it makes a loop. But compared to like, like for striper fishing, a teaser rig, you wanna make that dropper loop a lot longer. So you have that much space. And you're gonna take it and you're gonna pass it through. So what you do is you take it, pass it through one, two, three, four, five times. And then you're gonna take the loop and actually pass it through the mini loop you just made by twisting it. And what I do is I grab it with my teeth and I'll pull. So grab my teeth and pull. There's your dropper loop. So another six inches up, you're gonna do another dropper loop. And if you really want to get into some triple headers and flex on the boat that you're catching three at once, you can do another one, another six inches up. So it's a significantly long rig, but you can make it work. So the hooks I like to use, a lot of people use a couple different hooks when you're sea bass fishing, but the ones that I like to use are the classic bait holder hooks. Why do I like bait holder hooks? Because they have those back barbs on the back. Just like while I'm fluking, I don't want a fish to yank my bait off on that first drop. So when I'm sea bass fishing, I'll put clam on here and I'll make sure it rides up onto those barbs so they're not ripping it off. I have opportunity to catch. And the size I use, I like the four rods because, you know, big hooks catch big fish. So once you have your two to three droppers tied on, you're just going to feed the 40 pound material through the eyelet and then just I do a double pass so what I do here you can see I pass it through once I twist it with my fingers and I pass it through again this is any time I do a dropper loop it's just it's a good habit to have it just adds extra security to it and that's your whole rig now you can drop it down you can get ready to hook up into some nice knuckleheads and it's nice but it's also kind of, I mean, you're not going to keep them anyway because they're out of season, but it's still nice to catch them in the warm weather. You can get some nice blackfish if you're dropping down a clam. Now, hopefully you guys take advantage of the rig tying and get out there and get some action in on this hot sea bass bite. And stay tuned for next week's where if you guys like jigging up some fish, I'm going to show you guys the one sea bass jig to rule them all. Catch you next week.
Last thing, of course, is a giveaway, which is ongoing. And uh, we're gonna be giving away a um, bright sort of green apple chartreuse over white flat glide needlefish. Uh, I got a picture of it here. And um, we're gonna be, this one's running through July 24th, so we still got a long time to impress me. Uh, beyond that, you guys know the drill by now, but if you don't, you know, it's, uh, you just have to get a picture of you holding your fish. It doesn't matter if it's saltwater, freshwater, inshore, offshore, kayak, paddleboard, surf, any of that stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Send them in to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. And just make sure you give me the pertinent details like your name, the size of the fish, state where it was caught, stuff like that. Uh, send them in to me, we'll get you in the report probably get you in the magazine and uh, who knows, you might win an awesome plug. So send those in and we'll see who wins. Moving over to the reports now, I'll uh, we'll start things off up in Maine and we're seeing lots of great striped bass activity again along the down east coast, seeing fish up into the mid 40 inch class, seeing lots of guys out fishing and just lots of successful trips. Uh, but it's not just striped bass up there. We also got this awesome picture from Dan Lee and Chris Ford of a 200 pound halibut that they caught um, on an offshore trip. Uh, these guys have been doing this for a few years. They're finding success out there. Um, I know the run is a long run. They're going four to five hours offshore to find these fish. Um, but, I mean, you don't have to go to Alaska to catch an impressive halibut. This is, uh, this is one of the few that they've gotten, and, man, what a beauty. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Drop it down over the border into Massachusetts and start things off with James Jukes. Well, the freshwater guys, as far as reports are concerned, I haven't heard much from them, so... Uh, I'm sure it's slowed up a bit, although I'm sure they're out there still finding some. Uh, those, some of those guys fish the river and the local ponds and stuff pretty hard, so I'm sure they're still catching. Uh, didn't hear anything from the pike guys. Uh, the rest of the species are all there. They're all going. Uh, it's not game buses like it used to be, but, you know, they're still moving along. The water temperatures have come up quite a bit. Uh, I know we're supposed to have some more warm today and then some rain, but we'll see how that works. Uh, as far as the striped bass are concerned, let me tell you, it's been on fire. It's been cooking. Right now I'm in back of the shop and we're checking, uh, just keeping an eye on things. Saw a bunch of heron dropping out yesterday. I know there'll be more. Stripers will be right on their tail. Lawrence area, things have uh, slowed down up there. Uh, still fish being caught, but not as much as it used to be. So usually about this time of year, things drop down and fish stop moving quite a bit down river. Uh, but down on the ocean front, the clam, mackerel, worms, those guys uh, chunking have been doing pretty well. Uh, then the other guys that have been up in the rivers, I shouldn't say rivers, um, estuaries a little bit, those guys are doing well. Uh, myself, I had fish over 40 inches, so that was good to see. 20, 25 pounds, uh, one might have went 27, but not huge. Uh, another friend of mine, uh, he hit one that was 48 inches, and that was all of 40 pounds anyways. Uh, that was down in the mouth of the river. Those guys are uh, really cooking along. Daylight, moonlight, you name it, they're out there. Uh, but the better fish have been at night, and uh, they've been on soft plastics, uh, uh, mag daughters, SPs, you, you name it, Danny's, uh, right conditions, right plug, those guys are all getting really good fish, so, uh, it's really, you know, that time of year that this moon coming this week, new moon, <laughs> you better be out there, uh, just be safe about things. We had a boat fire yesterday, I'm not sure why. Uh, and we had another guy that went uh, off the jetty up here. So just, you gotta be careful with all your surroundings. Make sure you have a good landing spot for your fish. Don't drag them up in the sand. Uh, quick pick and release is always good. But uh, 
just make sure you handle yourself as well. We don't need any incidences or anywhere. But uh, yeah, Dave, that's that's it from here. Everything's good, cooking along. I'll be off to Cuddy Hunk this week. Hopefully we'll do well out there. All right, Dave, that's it from the Merrimack River area. And now the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge entries for the week. We're into week six of the Fisherman's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge, and here's this week's entries. We have Joseph Yam of Flushing, New York, who weighed in his porgy of 2.34 pounds, placing him in second in the porgy category. Then we have Stefan Molbauer of Port Washington, New York, with a sea robin weighing in at 2.65 pounds, also placing him in second in the sea robin category. And then there's the first fluke on the board at 11.76 pounds, caught by Scott Waterman of Canterbury, Connecticut. In the weak fish category, there's been a shuffle. We have entries in from Tom Lucas of Mastic Beach, New York, weighing in his weak fish of 9.5 pounds, taking the first spot in the weak fish category. Timothy Krause from the North Fork of Long Island with his weak fish of 6.55 pounds. Then we have Andreas Brundler from Hampton Bays, New York with his 5.6 pound tide runner and Robert Reed of Atco, New Jersey with his weak fish coming in at 5.11 pounds. So the top spot still remains with Anthony Savino with 21 points and the second and third spots, it's a tie with Frank Shea and Scott Waterman at 10 points each. Just a reminder, for your chance to win the grand prize Steigercraft powered by Yamaha and other great prizes, you need to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine and use the 2024 entry form filled out completely, available at thefisherman.com slash contests. Now heading down along the coast, we're still hearing a lot of great striped bass activity from Boston down through Plymouth. Uh, I haven't heard of any giant fish coming out of there, but I'm sure that they are there because plenty of good sized fish have already come through the canal. But I have seen fish up into the low 40 inch class. We're seeing lots of fish from like slot to 40 inches too. Um, and that's coming from surf fishermen and boat guys. Um, the boat guys are doing it on the ledges with eels and bunker and stuff like that. Uh, shore guys have been doing it with metal lips, have been doing it with needle fish, doing it with live eels. And um, by most accounts, the bite's been solid. It hasn't been off the hook, but it's been solid. Uh, jumping over the canal, heading out onto the Cape. Uh, a lot of those fish that came through the canal did seem to take a right instead of a left, and they're up in Cape Cod Bay. And guys are finding pretty good bite along that area as well. Um, seen a few bigger fish in that range. Uh, fish into the upper 40 inch class have been reported from there. And uh, a lot of bait along those shorelines. So things are really starting to come together striped bass wise on the Cape Cod Bay side. Um, on the freshwater end of things, a lot of guys are sort of leaving the trout alone, alone at this point. And I didn't see any really big largemouth bass caught this week, although I have heard of more guys out there throwing frogs. Uh, that's just an indication that summer fishing is beginning in freshwater. And uh, getting further out onto the Cape now, let's check in with the guys at the Goose. Here's Ian. What's happening, everybody? It's June 3rd. It's your boy Bags. Just hitting you with a weekly fishing report. Um, stripers have been phenomenal. Uh, it seems like we've had some blues rolling in from uh, Buzzards Bay into Nantucket Sound. So I'm very excited to get on those guys in the kayak on my days off. Um, some good ones, a 10 pound, 12 pound average on those guys. Um, bunch of max around. I know more bait than than fish down the backside, but there's you know it's really shaping up now. We've had uh, a couple of really strong pushes to the canal, some solid fish, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, 30 plus pounders being caught. So all those fish have kind of moved from um, Buzzards Bay through the canal and they're sitting in either Cape Cod Bay or they're kind of moving up to Boston, but it's kind of getting really lights out. There's a lot of big fish around and just a lot of fish in general. So uh, get out, whether it is um, from the beach or in the boat, it's, they're both really phenomenal right now. I think we get new moon Friday night. So I think that fishing from the beach is going to progressively get better. Um, don't take any nights off in the next week. Uh, on the freshwater side of things, bass fishing has been really good. I've been kind of easing off the trout. Uh, water temps are getting a little bit higher and I tried to um, not bug those guys in the summer months, but I took the Ned rig down to the pond and went for my first freshwater swim the other day and got a bunch of bass. First cast four pounder. So they're very active now. Um, I'm probably gonna go after work to uh, wait for the tides to get better. And I'll probably throw a little top water because I bet it's getting warm enough. Uh, a lot of the vegetation is kind of growing in. So whether it's uh, weedless garys 
or like I said, top water. Um, I would try to get on those guys dawn and dusk. I will say the one thing that has shown up this week with the warmer temps are the mosquitoes. So uh, if you're going out Sarcassin around dawn and dusk, I would highly recommend packing your bug spray because I paid the price for it the other night. Um, tight lines. Have a great day, guys. Peace. Now, as Ian said, there's been a lot more bluefish moving into uh, Vineyard Sound and Nantucket Sound. Still, and there's a lot of good striped bass out there, and we're seeing some uh, sizable black sea bass in that area as well. But a lot of these bluefish are moving out of Buzzards Bay. So some of them are probably heading up toward the canal, but a lot more of them seem to be leaking out through the holes in the islands there and heading up into Nantucket Sound. Uh, but a lot of those big bluefish are still out in Buzzards Bay. Uh, there's a lot of bunker in that area. that doesn't seem to be the numbers of bass that you might expect there to be uh, in that area right at this time of year. Typically we see a lot of fish. Um, but it's been a little bit of a lull striped bass wise, but the bluefish are more than making up for the slack there. As we head up more toward the canal, uh, the canal fishing has been more consistent for bass than it has been outside the canal. But uh, it has been a slower week of overall. And for a little bit more on that, here's East End Eddie. Got an east flood tide behind me here in the world famous Cape Cod Canal. And we have a, a new moon today, ushering in uh, breaking tides all week. So that's promising. And uh, it's been kind of hard to describe the canal lately because uh, some guys will tell you that it's dead, but uh, uh, just when you're ready to declare sun life support, uh, Scott uh, Ewell reels in a 45 inch on his white magic swimmer. And uh, so th the best way to describe it is that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're fishing the canal. They're just not as plentiful as we would like. And it's kind of a lull. And, just before the lull, uh, Mike Goodwin caught seven fish around mid-canal. 40, 40 inch was the, the smallest one, and the biggest one was 49 inch. Uh, Mike was working a uh, Green Max Savage off the bottom at the end of a west tide, and he, he caught fish right into the uh, slack and uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the east turn. So good for him, those are nice fish. And um, El, Eldar Durakovic from New Hampshire, uh, made the trip down and I uh, was happy that he did. He caught a slot on a breaking tide with a, a, magic, a white magic swimmer. And um, experienced canal rat uh, Jack uh, Barton had a great day the other day. He was using, uh, he was working a west tide with a, a colorless fish lab, which I've never used, but after the day Jack had him, I start. Uh, he, uh, he caught a bunch of fish, uh, slots and bigger including a heavy 42 inch and a 48 inch striper so 48 inches is a big fish congratulations to jack he's a great guy so i'm happy for him uh, the canal uh, sportsman's club is having a flea market this saturday june 8th from nine to two right on the banks of the canal and uh, it's at Bourne scenic park they're going to have uh, tables there with vendors and uh, it's free admission so stop by and get yourself a new lure and um a bunch of great guys there, uh, Taunt and Teddy Minard and New Hampshire Bob, and you'll have a good time. On the same day, June 8th, this Saturday, Barnes & Noble in Wayham is having a, uh, a book signing for me for my first book, uh, Seven Miles After Sundown, which actually came out six years ago. So I'll be there from noon to two at Barnes & Noble in Wayham, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, sign and inscribe a, a book for you, or you can just stop by and say hello. Um, so my uh, tip of the week is that when you're riding a bike under trees, some of these branches are really low hanging and just be careful that you don't make contact with the tip of your rod and some of these branches and damage your line and the tip. So uh, when you see those trees, you might want to move to one side or the other just to uh, avoid contact. Um, and today of course is D-Day, the 80th anniversary of D-Day, so have a good thought today for the brave veterans who gave their life on the beaches of Normandy so we can continue to live freely in the greatest country in the face of the earth. So until next time, catch a big one. Heading out into Buzzards Bay now, uh, heading out more toward the Rhode Island border, uh, we have seen lots of sizable uh, black sea bass. I heard it from the guys from the Bounty Hunter and I heard it from Jason Colby. Um, a lot of nice sea bass being caught right now. It seems like a lot of those bigger fish moved in over the last week, which has been great. 
Uh, they're still seeing some nice tog too, up to eight pounds, which has been cool, and more and more uh, scup moving in as well. So the bottom fishing has been awesome all throughout that area. Also got this photo from Jason Colby, which shows like a, I don't know what you want to call it, a Swamp Yankee Grand Slam or something like that. You've got, uh, you've got a, a, a fluke, you've got a bonito, and you've got a striped bass. Uh, all those caught on the same trip. And, um, you know, every couple years we see a bonito caught really early. Uh, that's a particularly nice bonito for this time of the year. Uh, but that's pretty cool to see. And um, that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. It was another busy week in the Coastal Kayak Clash. The big fish of the week goes to Ken Stark for his 45.5 inch striper, landing him in second place for the category. We had two nice sea bass hit the board. Todd Trezone voted this third place 17.5 incher and Al Green landed in second place with a 20 incher. Jeremy Kurtz floats into third place in the flu category with his 22.5 incher. And Gregory Vergere gets a step closer to the top three with his 22.75 inch weak fish. The top three looks like this. Mike Radzowinski holds third place with five points. Bob Wagner remains in second place with six points. Justin Osa remains at the top of the race with nine points. To get all the information on how to enter, visit thefisherman.com slash contests. Crossing over into Rhode Island, let's start things off with an East Bay report from TJ Kopecki. Hey guys, got a quick report for uh, a little bit of East Bay and a lot of Mount Hope Bay. And uh, we're going to start in southeastern Mass uh, in the Swansea Somerset area. Coles River has been on fire lately. I'm doing very well in there. Um, it's majority of the fish are small. I'm talking diaper stripers, anywhere from a foot long to 20 inches long. It's just loaded with uh, some nice little stripers, and they're fun to catch. And I've been having a great time. Uh, there's been a lot of people uh, on the bridge, underneath the bridge, casting uh, three inch. Swim plugs have been working for me. Uh, guys are getting them on top water, on the smaller top waters. Uh, it's just it's just very nice to see that those fish are in there feeding and they're feeding on really, really small bait. And uh, it's the same bait that the turns are working on in there. Um, it's just, it's a great little ecosystem in there right now. And uh, if you can get in there and fish, uh, it's been good on the incoming tide. Uh, that's what I've been fishing mostly. Moving out to my whole bay and uh, has been on fire just pretty much the, the last week or so. There's been some schools of Manhattan in there, uh, some in the bigger size, a nine to 10 inch bunker, and uh, there's been big bass feeding on them. Uh, so we're talking anywhere from the Brightman Street Bridge uh, up to Vets Memorial, all the way out to the Braga Bridge, and a little bit more towards Borden Lighthouse. Tons and tons of bass, uh, bigger bass, and uh, if you're on a boat, you, you'll find the fleet out there and uh, you'll know. Uh, moving further out into the bay towards uh, Spar Island and the mouth of the Kikamuit River, the bass have been out there too. There's been lots and lots of schools of bait. Uh, look for birds out there and uh, got a hint of uh, some uh, bigger bluefish that have been uh, roaming the area too. So uh, be prepared uh, if you're striper fishing, you might hook into a nice bluefish. I uh, haven't heard too much on fluke. I know there have been a couple reports of some nice fluke caught inside the Sakonet River uh, from a couple of my buddies that have been fishing up in there. And uh, we know they're catching sea robins there too. Well, once you see the sea robins, you're going to see the fluke. But, uh, and then they're starting to get some, some good scup now on the Need Maho Bridge. So uh, that's another option uh, for you guys on boats to try. So uh, going forward, looks pretty good. And uh, hey, don't count out the... Uh, a freshwater bite. I tell you, I had an outing this week uh, in the Milford Pond, and uh, I totally crushed it with uh, catching crappie. And uh, if if you like to eat them, I do. They're great, great fish to eat. They make great fish tacos. So uh, don't count out the freshwater. Uh, saltwater is amazing. Lots of species to catch here in the East Bay. Uh, moving into a little bit of uh, Bristol uh, Harbor where uh, I got some reports too of some uh, nice small stripers up inside of the harbor, Independence Park, where the boat ramp is. Uh, people have been uh, fishing off that nice fishing pier that they have over there, uh, catching some schoolies at night. So uh, that's all I got from you for the East Bay and a little bit of my whole bay. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Tight lines, guys.
Now moving up into Narragansett Bay, um, there's definitely been a movement of striped bass into the bay over the last seven to 10 days. Now a lot of these fish are smaller than what we typically see at this time of the year. We, we're typically talking about a lot of big fish moving up into the bay. And uh, that hasn't been happening in the numbers that we typically expect. And that's probably to, we can probably blame the lack of bunker for that. Uh, there are still some really nice fish coming out of the bay, don't get me wrong. But um, there's been a big influx of fish from like 15 to 20 pounds. Um, and those are, you know, no one's, no one's upset about catching a 15 to 20 pound striper. So uh, the action's been good. A lot of these fish are sort of holding up or concentrating in choke points, places where the, you know, where all the water's being funneled down to a smaller area, uh, probably just because it's funneling a lot more bait down and giving them a better feeding opportunity. Uh, but, you know, if you kind of do the Google Earth view of uh, Narragansett Bay, it's going to make it a little bit easier to decide where you probably should go um, if you want to catch some striped bass this weekend. Uh, also been more bluefish spreading out into uh, Narragansett Bay and Mount Hope Bay this week. Uh, for the first couple of weeks here, or for the last couple of weeks, I should say, um, most of the bluefish were concentrated on the western side, but now they're starting to spread out more. And we are still seeing some weak fish coming out of the coves uh, up toward Warwick and, uh, and Providence, but I didn't hear the same numbers that we heard last week. So um, hopefully these stronger tides that we've got, we've got the new moon coming in tonight. Uh, hopefully these stronger tides will kick up that weak fish bite, so you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, for a little bit more on all the stuff happening up here in the bay, let's check in quickly with Jeff Sullivan. Hey Dave, what's happening? Jeff back with the weekly video. Um, I didn't see you guys the last two weeks. Um, I know it's a little late, but I hope you guys had a good Memorial Day weekend, a fun and a safe one. Um, I hope it was fishy for you. Um, also, I just want to shout out to Narragansett Surfcasters Club. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you guys, all the guys there. Um, you guys did a fantastic job um, letting me speak at your meeting. Um, I mean, I was very honored and it was a blessed to have that, that opportunity from you guys. You guys were fantastic. Um, thanks, Bruce. Thanks again. Um, all right, let's just dive right into the striper bite. The striper bite has been absolutely crazy. Um, I mean, whether they're blitzing on Bunker, because Bunker is back in our base. Um, I was getting a little worried there for a minute. Um, I knew they were going to show up. I just didn't know when. Um, you know, I was getting a, getting a little worried. Um, but they're back. Bunker's back. You know, we got on fish that were throwing Bunker everywhere the other day. And it was straight pandemonium. Um, starting to look like fish miss again, as I as I say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we marked fish. We marked pods of, pods of uh, Bunker. Um, you know, we would throw the big shads. Actually, this one ripped its face right off. That's always no, that's always good. It'll still work. Um, no, we mark pods and pods of bunker. We mark, um, we go over the top of them. You know, if it's twenty under twenty five feet, we'll throw the dock, hook up, we'll get tripled up, doubled up, whatever have you. A um, lot of nice fish that way. Um, bluefish are mixed in. Nice size bluefish are mixed in. It's good to see that. Um, you get a lot of fish spitting up, spitting up squid too. You know, and that goes for the fluke. You know, if you guys are out there fluking as well, um, you know, there's a lot of fluke spitting up squid. Uh, yesterday we got a, a nice pile of fluke and uh, they were spitting up three to six inch squid, you know, spitting them up. So uh, they're out there. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of bait out there. Um, the rain bait showed up too. I don't know where they came from, but um, yeah, there's a lot of bait out there and I'm very, very happy to see that. Um, Freshwater, freshwater bites been going absolutely just bonkers lately. Um, the spawn modes here, these fish are spawning. I kind of just tone it back, give them a little bit of a break, but I have been doing price checks, which, which they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I'll be doing more night trips um, this coming week just to get some, get some big girls again. Um, the crappie bite's been off the chart. Uh, I, you know these these crappie I'm getting are size of dinner plates they're absolutely huge and um it's always fun on on light tackle so uh you know dave with that being said um i mean it's still it's still fishy there's still fish coming in there's a lot of bait around bluefish are biting uh the fluke are biting the sea bass are biting the scup are everywhere uh, for you scup guys um and gals um but you know in the surf we've been doing really well i've been finding fish in in the back bays um 
they're probably going to start turning around here in the next two weeks but it's been an absolute blast um i've been kind of getting a little a little bit of sleep here and there which is okay the shop's been crazy come in to lucky bay come say hi uh you know uh and it's it's just been a good it's been a good couple weeks steve that's all i have to say but all right same time next week guys go get them now heading out of the bay along the Narragansett shoreline, striped bass fishing has been pretty good along that area, although it has cooled off some since the end of last week. Um, saw some really nice fish come out of that region, and uh, we also saw, uh, from, presumably from somewhere in that area, we saw a, uh, you know, a fish of a lifetime from longtime friend of the fisherman Steve McKenna, or Stevie Van Stahl, as he was known in the surf reports for all those years. Uh, 54 and a half pounds, just wanted to say congratulations to Steve for the fish of a lifetime. I mean, uh, no one deserves it more than he does, and I mean, that's one heck of a fish. Uh, for a little bit more on what's going on in the central part of the state and heading out toward Block Island, where I have been hearing about some big striped bass showing up on the ledge, here's Captain John Lee from JL Charters. I've been out a few times this week, fluking. Uh, it was a grind for me. I'm not sure how other people did, but I did pretty poorly. Um, I hear the fluke bites a little, uh, a little grindy. Um, and that's south of the island, east grounds, the whole south shore. I'm not sure Newport's the con it. I'm not sure what's happening that way. Um, and the south end of the island, um, there's a lot of bass. The blues have starting to trickle in. They're showing up. But I haven't really seen that big charge of shear waters yet, so so the sand eels aren't really up 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 inside yet. Um, there are blue fins around inshore and out on coxes, um, and uh, you know we're st still kind of waiting for the bottom fish to kick off. Uh, the funny thing is, is the the stripers and blues are easy. The bottom fish that's a little tricky right now. So hope that improves. Take care. The Coastal Kayak Clash is back for 2024. Win this Old Town Sportsman PDL 120 fully outfitted by Yakatak.com. Our second place winner will take home this Hummingbird Helix 7. Win third place and you walk away $500 richer. And there are many other ways to win as well. We've got reels from Daiwa and lures and gear from Yozori. If you fish from a kayak and you're a Fisherman subscriber, you're eligible to enter the CKC. Catch one of eight qualifying species. Photograph them next to a flat ruler showing the fisherman tag with your kayak clearly visible and get yourself on the leaderboard. This kayak only tournament kicks off May 1st and ends November 30th. Get all the details at thefisherman.com. Now moving out along the South County beaches, seeing a lot more bait along the beach. We've seen a lot more uh, squid. We've seen a lot of other various sort of small to medium sized bait fish. No one seems to know exactly what they're looking at, but uh, a lot of bait fish around that area. Uh, there have been some Atlantic mackerel along that stretch as well, which could fire up a really great striped bass bite, although it hasn't yet. Uh, but one thing that has happened with all those squid and uh, smaller bait fish is the fluke bite has really started to kick into gear. And the sea bass bite went from like kind of not even barely happening to like full on uh, great fishing going on out there. So the bottom fishing, uh, and that half of Rhode Island is looking really good. Breach waves are still putting out fish, although the numbers seem to be a little diminished uh, compared to what they were two weeks ago. And uh, we are seeing good numbers of blue fish. There's two sizes. We got some really nice fish, like in the nine to 12 pound size. And then we have, you know, I wouldn't call it an inundation, but there's a, there are good numbers or impressive numbers of uh, like two to four pound blue fish uh, along that stretch as well. So a lot of fish to catch. And uh, overall, the fish has been pretty good in Rhode Island. Jumping over into Connecticut now, uh, it does seem like a lot of the bass that were up inside the Thames River have pushed out now. So uh, finding more action along those adjacent beaches, along those you know, various islands and whatnot uh, in the eastern half of the Sound. Uh, the most consistent fishing that we're seeing in that area is still coming from the race. Uh, guys are diamond jigging out there. Guys are three-weighing eels, three-weighing bucktails, throwing some top water. And overall, the bite's been very good. There's been some bluefish mixing in. Guys are getting some sea bass during the slack tides on some of those deeper ledges. And uh, you're seeing striped bass from anywhere from like 25 inches to 35 pounds. Uh, and probably some bigger fish mixing in as well that we're not hearing about. Uh, moving back up along the shoreline, we are seeing more and more striped bass in the area of the Connecticut River, or in the vicinity of the Connecticut River, and some smaller fish out around Niantic Bay. Sea bass action is, you know, steadily getting better and better. I still haven't heard about it being like 
off the charts great. Uh, a lot of the guys that are doing more damage are heading over to Rhode Island or heading out to Block Island. Uh, on the fluke end of things, guys are, um, get, most of the guys that are doing well are going to Montauk, going to Block Island, going to Rhode Island. Uh, we are seeing some keeper size fluke inside of Long Island Sound, but for the most part, um, it's been on the slower side and the guys that are catching them in the sound are mostly doing it on the other side, on the New York side. For a little bit more on things happening in the Connecticut River region, let's start things off with a, with a report from Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up guys? For this week's Fisher Report, there is all kinds of bait all throughout East Long Island Sound. We're seeing adult mackerel, butterfish, whiting, porgies, and bunker. So there is a plethora of different bait species. The stripers are feeding heavily on them. I'm anticipating with the new moon this week, after the new moon, we're going to see another push of big bass and bunker moving through. I think that's going to really set things off. The bluefish are still thin in most areas, so which is a good thing if you're trying to target stripers. The black sea bass fishing is pretty good with guys going out and catching limits. So you have a few different options. Good luck. Now let's head up the river and we'll check in quickly with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, so it's definitely starting to feel like summer on the Connecticut River. Water's dropped substantially, cleared up very nicely. And of course, there's plenty of stripers and some blues out around the mouth. But uh, upriver in the freshwater scene, uh, the carp fishing has shifted to kind of an early and late bite. Uh, mornings are best, afternoons can be pretty good as well. Uh, a lot of fish are post-spawn, they're mostly done spawning. Uh, Bowfin's been pretty good also. Uh, dead baits, I of course do it primarily on the fly. Uh, you get good windows of opportunity to sight fishing and get them on artificials, especially late in the evening. They have kind of a feeding period then. Uh, as far as bass goes, both largemouth and smallmouth, also uh, primarily best fishing early and late. Uh, that's just typical this time of year. When you start to get into the heat, uh, your better fishing periods are going to happen during low light and uh, when the water is either at its coolest or in the case of the afternoon when it's at its warmest. Um, but, you know, fair amount of bait around, uh, water clarity is quite good, top water fishing can be very, very productive now. Uh, so a little bit of everything uh, is pretty good. Pike fishing is kind of slowed down because the water's warmed up, of course. Um, and if you find pike that are piled up around a cold tributary dumping in, best to leave those fish alone, they're kind of sensitive. Uh, but pretty good time to get on a big big variety of fish. There's still plenty of stripers all the way up the river, uh, so don't be surprised if you run into those. If you go out and target panfish or smaller bass, uh, it's not uncommon this time of year that you'll have the odd bigger striper uh, that's you know kind of lingering around post herring run uh, that'll chase in a, a hooked panfish, so he might see a little bit of that. But definitely a good time to get out. Uh, weather's looking pretty good going into the weekend, so good time to get out and fish the Connecticut River. Heading out of the river now and making a quick stop in Westbrook, we'll check in now with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. What's up everyone, Matt here from Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Uh, things feel like they're about to blow wide open right now. Um, all the pieces are in place for us. In the central sound, we don't have any bunker um, in here yet, um, at least in any sort of uh, noteworthy amount. Um, there's scattered stories here and there, but we're waiting for that kind of main biomass to come in. Uh, which should be any day now. We've got the new moon coming up soon. That'll move some pieces around as well. Uh, we've got big bluefish around. They're not as heavy as they were last year, but they're definitely around. Um, sometimes they're not in feeding mode. They're just kind of cruising flats, but everyone knows what it's like when they do get in feeding mode. Uh, big stripers are on the reefs pretty heavily. Guys on the reefs with diamond jigs, spoons, uh, three-way and bucktails, three-way and eels doing very well. Some really, really positive reports coming from those places. Um, we also have a really strong sea bass bite, 60 feet plus has been the norm, SK jigs, bait rigs, kind of that usual stuff. Um, Fluke has been very good. We've had some great reports from Fluke, which is really awesome to hear after last year's kind of dud year. Um, so things are on the up and up right now. Uh, it should be any day now that we start hearing um, some reports of bigger fish and that kind of that bunker focused biomass moving inshore. Uh, lots of good weather recently, lots of good weather to come. Get out there, enjoy it. Now heading out to the western half of the sound, bottom fishing's been picking up. We've seen a little bit more sea bass action, a lot more porgy action. 
Uh, but the main thing that's getting most, most of the attention right now is just the sheer numbers of big bait fish in the western half of the sound. We've got tons and tons of bunker which were late to show up and then we have this surprise bumper crop of Atlantic mackerel uh, which is fueling to, you know those two things together are fueling some you know once in a lifetime striped bass fishing. Uh, we're seeing guys doing it with topwater plugs like the dock or a pencil popper or, or a big surface metal lip. Uh, guys are doing it with the flutter spoon when the fish aren't showing on top but we're seeing a lot of nice fish. We're seeing a lot of fish from like 45 to 50 inches. Some of these fish are eclipsing the 50 pound mark and uh, Overall, there's just tons of fish. So, you know, if you're, even if you're not getting those, you know, unicorn size fish, there's still lots of fish from like 35 to 40 something inches uh, being caught every day. It doesn't matter if it's sunny, cloudy, rough, calm. Uh, the bite's been very, very good. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys are hoping this never ends. For a little bit more on that, let's check in now with Max Finch from Fisherman's World. This week, we've seen a lot of nice striped bass caught in that 30 to almost 50 pound class range. We heard of some 50 plus inches caught around the triangle, trolling umbrellas, mojos, and bunker spoons. There's a lot of fish starting to move in close to the islands with the bunker starting to really flood in now. I've seen some really nice top water fish. The early morning bite at sunrise has been great. Guys getting out have uh, you know, seen a lot of nice fish. I said there's a lot of fish in that 20 to 30 pound class this year. So fishing places like Levin B, Eaton's Neck, you know, Can 13, 28C, the OB buoy, Green's Ledge has been good, and then plugging around the islands. And the bass, you know, to our west are still really good off Captain's 32A, and then to our east, middle ground. Blue fishing has been really great also. There have been some real gators in the mix, especially guys chunking at night. I got out a couple times this night, and we had over a dozen bluefish mixed in with some really quality, uh, nice bass. You know, they'll take top water plugs, they'll take chunks at night, you know, they're not picky. But if you really want to target them, you know, working our deep water reefs right now, trolling wire with umbrellas or braid, you know, with an inline drill with bunker spoons is great. The fluke fishing starting to pick up on our side also. We've seen some fish to like six pounds, so that's really good. Bait still seems to be the key to get these fish. So working places like 26, 24, and then off of uh, Sherwood Island humps. And then guys shooting across, you know, Smithtown Bay, really close up Eaton's Neck, the Coast Guard Station, and Port Jeffs is also, also a really good option. Sea bass in, it's kind of slow this season. We haven't heard a lot of quality fish, but I have seen, you know, a lot of people really starting to target them now. The opener was really slow, but it seems like it's starting to pick up a little. So I would really concentrate on some deep water wrecks, you know, south of the islands, and then off Stanford, 32A, and then Nog, 28C, the Celtic wreck, and 11B. Porgies are really starting to flood our side too also now, and I'm seeing more and more reports of guys catching them from the beaches and the pier. But if you do want to target them, sandworms, squid, spearing, clams are all, all good. And then on the boat, working places like 28C, Kakini Shoals, Green's Ledge are really good options, and remember always to bring clam jump. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. I mean, this is, this is the best time of the year. Best weather. Uh, just lots of migrating fish going on, lots of hungry fish showing up in new places. We got the moon happening tonight, the new moon, which is going to kick things up for all striped bass fishermen. Uh, so you definitely have no excuse. You guys got to get out there this weekend. You got to take pictures. You got to send them in to me at dAnderson at thefisherman.com. We'll get you in the contest. We'll get you in the magazine. We'll get you in the reports. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You'll get a full taste of what we offer. We cover all the fishing from Delaware to Maine. Uh, we do saltwater, freshwater, inshore, offshore, kayak, boat, doesn't matter. We cover it all. It's $29.95 for a year. You're going to get 12 paper magazines sent to your house. You're going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email. And you're going to get digital access to all the back issues plus our other editions. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. There's no way around it. But if you're still not interested after you check out the website, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing right there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.